Hi everyone, this is Balint from chatbottutorial.com and today I am I have a guest with me, uh, Thomas. Um, hi Thomas. Hey, hi. Uh, for the listeners who don't know you yet, uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself in a couple of sentences? Yes, for sure. Um, my name is Thomas Schulz and I'm uh, living in Barcelona, but I'm a Swiss guy. So um, I started uh, or I went to Barcelona three years ago. And I'm uh, imagine because I'm here talking to you now because um, I founded uh, Bots Camp. This is a free online conference um, last year in September. And um, yeah, this is what my um, what I'm doing currently, mainly um, having the conference about bots, AI, and machine learning. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, but uh, we will find out more in the discussion, I think. Definitely, definitely. Uh, let's just uh, start a little bit earlier before your uh, chatbot story. Uh -huh. um, sorry, my camera went on. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, so um, I, I did my homework a little bit and searched about you, and there were quite a few Twitter bios that said it's run by you, it's um, maintained by you. So. What are your current projects or before uh, Bootscamp? Absolutely, yeah. And it's, it's not only about the Bootscamp. Um, I started uh, like uh, seven years ago uh, managing big communities in Switzerland. I'm still doing. This is uh, managing on Xing, um, the better network than LinkedIn for the German speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm doing there, we having a big community in Zurich, about 30,000 people or it's even 37,000. Uh, what we're doing there, we're making networking events, and like every week or every second week, um, I made already 400 events the last uh, six, seven years. And the other thing what I'm doing is called Helvetia. This is a Swiss healthcare network as well, having the community in Xing. And um, yeah, these are like the big communities I'm managing. I'm doing and um, yeah, this is all about uh, changing or it changed a lot the last years, but still we're having a lot of offline things. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yes, you can imagine now I'm sitting here in Barcelona, so I'm having a lot of support from guys in Zurich making this great event still. So yeah, we are making, I think, uh, good success with this uh, community, so i so it seems like that uh, organizing, connecting with people is uh, very natural to you. Uh, was it uh, the yes, establishing absolutely. factor for the bootcamp? bootcamp? Yeah, as well. Um, as I said, I started this um, communities beside my job I had with uh, the last job I had in Switzerland was with IBM. Mm -hmm. And as there was sales manager for healthcare. And you can imagine uh, in connecting people and ideas and project initiatives was always the driver behind all this, what I'm doing. And I'm continuing this. And uh, yeah, as you said, now this is a lot of offline. And then changed it a little bit because um, I wanted to have like a broader audience and more international um, speakers. So yeah, that's why I decided in September last year making this online conference. Okay, sweet. And uh, how did you uh, meet chatbots? Uh, what's the story you and the chatbots? Yeah, that's uh, another interesting story. Um, looking behind, I had, as explained, I had uh, the healthcare network Helvetia. And then I started together with my friend and uh, uh, supporting me as well on the bots camp, Maurice Godire. We started a project um, for the Smart Health Lab. This was the same idea, connecting healthcare professionals, but not only, not only in Switzerland, but all over the world. So um, we decided to start a community as well. And we said, and we thought about like, how can we reach all these um, international guys from the digital health we started um, a bot, our own bot project called Shiloh. And yeah, this was like the start. We started this in April last year. And then, so I, that's why I digged into all these bots and chatbot stuff. And this was like the start for my, um, yeah, for my thoughts, what could I change in the, in the bots area? So uh, for that uh, connection, uh, uh... I would say challenge. Uh, you thought that uh, chatbots would be the best 
Uh, did you try other opportunities or you were just generally interested and okay, let's try this new technology, like new technology on, on, on a sense uh, what we have today? You know, um, the idea, perhaps I have to dig into uh, more details, was like, okay, how we reach these people and how we, uh, how a bot may or how someone could support us like for the onboarding on our community, finding interesting people. And so it was like more obvious that we need to have a, a machine supporting us because we don't want to work 24-7. So yeah, that's what was the idea, making a, um, a bot. So I imagine you learned a lot about uh, bots uh, during this process and you somewhat became an expert and uh, knowledgeable, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. We made uh, great articles about this experience because uh, we were like, uh, like early movers with this uh, initiative Shiloh. And now we are even early movers with the online conference about bots and AI. So um, uh, great success and we are moving forward. As you said, when I met a lot of people in the bot space and not only local, you know, because we were online and international. So I have, I think, a very good overview of the current uh, trends, what's going on, what speakers or what companies or what platforms. So this helps me a lot, like uh, making the bots camp, our online conference every three months. You know, it's not like the usual conferences they make once a year and but we have like uh, every three months. So looking for speakers or uh, great projects, initiatives, ideas. So yeah, and there as well, as you can imagine, we have a support, not Shiloh, but Sparky. This is our next bot supporting us for the bots camp. But uh, a little the same update, or like the, but he is making even more, looking for um, interesting articles, people's uh, people on the on, on Twitter mainly. Okay, uh, I I would I would have a question about Sparky a little bit later. Um, I okay. just wanted to ask about your motivation. So you have uh, uh, Health Asia, you have uh, Xing, uh, you have another project you haven't even talked about, I guess. This is the B uh, Q. Big. Exactly, B. Yeah. This is my my company. But uh, what was behind or what is behind all these projects? As you can imagine, I have I have not I can't live only from love and air. So that's why I founded Beak some um, years ago as well. And uh, managing, or well, this company manages all my communities and projects. And uh, with this, I'm earning money for um, like supporting companies or communities in this area. I mean, I'm an expert of like in the healthcare or in the event stuff. Mm -hmm. So with all these projects going on, uh, what was the motivation to enter into the bots uh, space uh, industry as well? Yeah, as I, as I said, I started with the, the own project Chilo, but uh, very soon then I realized like I want to get or want, I want to share this uh, knowledge uh, with my communities I have in uh, in Switzerland with Xing and uh, or Xing Zurich and Elfezia like business communities and i see these discussions uh, there are a lot of uh, online communities as well about bots and ai but in my opinion they are more a uh, technical orientation you know and they're not thinking about like okay what or what are the business opportunities for with these new technologies so um, that's why I thought like I want to share um, like uh, with international experts and uh, projects like what's going on. And on the other hand, um, I started now then some weeks ago as well, not only making the online conference, but now we have a, an, a new initiative called, called BotCheck. It's what we want to bring together like um, companies and who ideas for automation what could bring value for bots and ai and uh, we are building up a great community of experts and we want to bring them together like companies or uh, um, 
um, yeah, what who, who are looking for some ideas, and this is like an ideation platform called Botcheck. Uh, sounds like uh, Botscamp uh, can be a good base for uh, collecting ideas. Uh, yeah. So someone is new to Botscamp. Uh, what is exactly, and um, who is this for? Yeah, um, the bots camp is a, a boot camp, and so you have to imagine everyone can apply for a presentation. So we usually start um, two months before the, the conference happens, then people may register, bring in their idea of what they want to present, and then we make a little check if it's, um, if it's not only like a sales pitch. And then we we make them available for our community. And then two, three weeks before the conference, the, our community can vote. So um, in December, we made the first. And now in uh, April 26, we, make, we will make the second. So we had like um, some applications, and people may vote. So it's like really a boot camp. So it's not us who decide who was who's going to present, but the community. So this is, I think, another um, big advantage of other conferences. You know, not only the the big names or the always the same presenting, but we want to see what our um, community wants to see. So this is a very interesting experience as well we made. Um, and what is the what deadline is the for the voting? Yeah, the, the voting is already over for the next one, but uh, in two or three weeks' time, we even start for the third edition in June. So the applications start. We have already like uh, 10 applications for the next bots camp in, uh, in June. Um, the procedure is always the same. We, we make a check and then we put them online, make them available. The, the, um, applications even may present with a one minute short explainer what they want to present and then we make it available online and then as i said two three weeks before the conference we provide all the information to our communities and then the voting happens for, uh, within one week and then the 14 winners then they may present okay so someone watching this video uh then there is always an upcoming seminar, uh, the Boots Camp, Boots Camp, and uh, you can um, also decide who wants to, uh, who, who will present. Um, okay, this I, is like a free, um, re really user-centric online conference, what we made with the Boots Camp. Uh, I actually organized a, a virtual summit uh, like a similar uh, to this uh, last year, and there were so many things you, that just came up and you didn't even count with that. Uh, so you started last year in September uh, mm -hmm. and you managed to do it like very quickly the first uh, uh, bots camp. Absolutely. What were the major yeah. challenges? Uh... Yeah, you can imagine uh, I had the idea uh, based on the experience and the projects I made and then one night I made the decision and within two days, I set up all the conference because all the experience I had already. We having the community in Slack. I have already other communities in Slack as well, like with a bot as well supporting us and some online conference I made as well. So this was like the experience of for other projects I made before. It was for me quite easy to set it up. But uh, yes, you are right. Sometimes they may, because um, it is all online, you have some technical issues. And uh, But now I think we are quite, um, we have um, good experience now to make it uh, working. Yeah, you just implemented your offline skills into the online world as well, I guess. Uh, how did it go? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, the, this was a, this is a nice story behind as well. The first um, bot camp we made in December, people were writing us, "Hey, where is the nearest airport to Switzerland to this conference?" You know, <laughs> we had to explain to people, "No, no, you know, we have very nice visuals, and from all they all from Switzerland, from my good friend Boris Baldinger, who made who makes all these visuals." 
you know, like Swiss mountains and very, very nice people. They want to travel to this conference. They say like, hey, where, what is the airport, airport blah, blah, blah. I say, no, 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 you don't have to travel, you know, stay at home, enjoy like the nice pictures from Switzerland, but we will make it online. So this was like the first um, experience or like ex explaining that it is really online, you know, then people need to change a little bit their mind because usually they're used to travel all around the world, seeing all the speakers. I think now in the, um, in the second bots camp is um, quite easier to, to explain and to show how it is all working. I imagine that could be the first task of uh, SparkyBot to explain, no, it's not in Switzerland, yeah. it's not online. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and you decided to do uh, every three months, if I get that correctly. Sorry? Uh, you, to... you decided to organize this event every three months. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and as you can imagine, like the AI and bot space is moving forward very quickly. And as we make it online, you know, we are more flexible, we are very fast to like change and to adapt our conference. And yeah, why not make it every three months? You know, this is like the, the advantage we have having it online. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, what I was thinking about. Like since December, it's 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 the space I, I started uh, working with chatbots uh, more intensely. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's April now and it's so much uh, thing going on. Like... So yeah, now then like there is the industry. Facebook conference, there are even, yeah, you know, um, coming back to Sparky, what Sparky is doing, uh, he's uh, mainly active on, on Twitter and on in our Slack community. But Sparky, for example, he's looking for us interesting articles about bots, AM, and machine learning on deep learning. So um, he, he had already like 15,000 tweets, you know, like all about articles, news about in this space. And this uh, he started uh, already some months ago. Now you can imagine all this are news and it's not like, uh, like retweets or whatever, but every single tweet is something new and news uh, or news about in this area. And I fully agree with you. There are, there's, there are such many things happening that's incredible. So, and that's why we, we need Sparky to like, he's like digging into the field and to working 24 hours for us, identifying new projects or even new persons. Because we, di we, di we didn't even touch like the bot tish 100, you know, this is another thing I, I invented as well for the, for the bot scan. Uh, so, I actually wrote an article on uh, just uh, these days uh, about uh, conferences and uh, why every conference uh, should uh, have a chatbot. And actually, Spark is an amazing example how uh, helpful it can be during the organization or for the users as well. Absolutely. It seems like uh, it um, helps you find new prospects for the conference. Yeah, definitely. So um, imagine Sparky is uh, like twittering all um, uh, news in this space. So usually um, this article consists of news, but as well people writing about it or even featuring uh, new companies, new projects. And this is um, what we are using as source for Botscam. So uh, we, we are identified uh, some of the speakers even, you know, for the Botscam because Sparky provides us the information we can check it and see, okay, what this is all about. And then we get, uh, this will change then to human. We are getting in contact with um, these people or do we bring them to our Botscam Twitter account. And there even Sparky is uh, providing information to them. You know, it's not like uh, looking for information, but Sparky is like making the onboarding or the first uh, welcome on the, on the Botscam Twitter account. And this is uh, working very good. We nearly have now 4,000 Twitter followers and none of them we had to buy, you know. This is very organic and based on interactions we're having with Botscamp and Sparky. Uh, and does Sparky has a special role uh, during the uh, Botscamp as well? Like, um, does it connect? Yeah. Or? No, no, Spark is not connecting people for this. We have another um, bot in, in, in Slack called Donut. 
So this is a solution. Uh, Donut is looking every Monday based on interactions people having in the different channels on our Slack community. And then you get every Monday, you get like an introduction to a new member based on your um, interaction on Slack. And this is something, as I said, I, I have made a lot of offline conferences and I know sometimes how complicated it is. The bigger it gets, you know, imagine you have a conference with 500 or even 1,000 people. Now imagine to how, to how many persons you get introduced during this conference. You know, usually you get, uh, you're sitting together with your peers or, um, or even the speakers that you can't uh, get in contact with them. And this is uh, the big difference we have in Slack. You know, there everyone is reachable, but even we have a support of a, of a bot uh, bringing pe the people together. And yeah, Sparky has uh, another role in our Slack because Sparky, what he is doing, he's providing on one hand for the registration. So now everyone who is in the Slack community, he or she may choose the session or the presentation she or he wants to see. So Sparky provides like all the links and then the, for the onboarding for the registration. And the other thing what I mentioned is like about the Botish 100. So we, may, we are curating currently like 1,400 persons in the AI and bot space and we're making a ranking. And uh, Sparky, you can ask Sparky as well about your current ranking, where you are in that list. Every second week we are making an update. Uh, does Sparky conduct uh, voting as well? Or there is another tool for that? No, for the voting, um, we, we, may, we, we haven't had that uh, perfect solution. So we make it quite easy by a Google Sheet. You know, we just send out the Google Sheet and then you, there you rate for every session. But currently, we don't have the, um, the perfect solution. But um, yeah, as I said before, as we are going uh, to make it every three months, we are quite, we can easily adapt the uh, bots camp to, to new findings or new solutions. Mm -hmm. And will there be uh, during the session some sort of interactivity with the users uh, besides the chat, uh, I imagine? Yeah, no, um, we have like the, the online conference presentation and within this uh, presentation, people may chat on the, on the online conference, but yes, for sure. People may even then follow up after or even before the conference with speakers or we have specific channels, for example, for digital health. As you can imagine, this is my favorite topic. So we, we there have like for, uh, nearly 400 people talking about the healthcare space. What are the opportunities for bots and AI? And yeah, we are. We 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 can adapt very quickly because um, as people, are, as we see in what areas people are interested in, we can open a new channel and the, making the discussion live. Yeah, organizing online uh, brings also not just a, a location freedom, but also like flexibility to scale things. As I see, absolutely. Yeah, that's that was was the main idea, you know, behind like no uh, no travel costs, even no ticket costs. So this is important to say as well. The bots camp is free of charge to join. This changed the first um, bots camp I made. I thought about like okay, um, or the first in December you had to buy a ticket, you know. But now imagine I was talking to guys in Brazil, India, all over the world, and they said like, yeah, I, we can't afford paying even 30 euros, you know, for, the, for, the, for us it's very much money. And so I decided like um, three, four weeks ago, like, okay, we make it for free, you know, this is like uh, hustle free, like the Unleashed conference. And um, yeah, and the, this decision was right, I think, because in the last uh, two weeks, we got over 400 new registrations for the bot scan. So this is uh, amazing, you know, and we are far away from where, where we could be because there are a lot of people involved in this space. And currently we have like 700 people on our conference. Yeah, uh, as, as chatbots also get more popular, the organize uh, uh, communities around it as well. Uh, I have a Facebook uh, community and mm -hmm. uh, I just added 100 people yesterday, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but uh, that's uh, that's great, you know. But then we, we are um, inviting everyone who wants to join from all over the world. 
as I said, we don't have like even no travel tickets. So um, there is no reason not to join the bots camp, you know. But we are working on that uh, with a lot of com community as well. But because some they think like, oh, but there needs to be something behind. But uh, you know, what we want to do with the bots camp is like to share and to 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 give like information about the the bots and the AI space. Exactly. It's actually on, on my birthday, and I'm going to attend uh, as it's uh, uh, yeah, exactly. a yeah. That's nice. <laughs> um, just one more thing. Uh, I, I started the registration, and uh, do you have to register to all sessions individually, or there is a bank registration, or how does that? No, work? no. Yeah, this is um, the same. Or we had the experience in December. In December, we registered everyone for every session. But now you imagine it's your choice, you know, and so why should we know what is your choice? So, but this is like always the, um, the other thing, like if we don't register yourself, you have to do it on your own. But usually you have to do the same if you're going to an offline conference as well. Sure, you have to say like, okay, now I'm going in, in this room or on, on the other room. And this takes you five minutes time, you know, to decide. And um, but the other thing, if you don't do that, because we, we we decided not to provide like the replays, what you can do if you have it online as well, we just provide the replays for the live participants. Because imagine we now saying to our uh, presenters, we have a big community uh, um, participants, blah blah blah, and at the end, no one is uh, showing it live. You know that's why we made like the little thing saying, okay. You need to be live there on the conference to see afterwards the replay because we don't want the people just um, deciding when they want to see, it, but we want to have the live experience as well for our presenters. You know. Yes, uh, online uh, you have this disadvantage, so to say, that uh, people have the freedom to okay, I can just uh, take a look at later on, and it's exactly. It's, um but uh you know we are looking as well in the, in our sessions you know we have 15 minutes presentation or presentation of of, of the speaker and then we have like uh, five minutes q and a questions and this makes it interesting as well of, of for the speaker you know like to get real time feedback thoughts and not like just afterwards uh, having uh, lots of mails exactly. that's um that's the idea yeah, they. Yeah. It's like they could just like do a just YouTube video <laughs> if they want that. Um, so, yeah. Botish, uh, how did the idea come? What's the story behind it? Yeah, they're they're the same. You know, um, we have we 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 got a, a lot of contacts in in this bots and AI field and. I like a little bit the competition. You know, like uh, or everyone says like, hey, I'm important. And then I said, like, okay, why don't we make like a ranking, you know? And there are like scores like cloud. Not everyone like not everyone likes cloud, you know. But on the other hand, this is like an indication: is someone doing it uh, good or bad, you know? And it's not sometimes it's uh, tiny details. So and then as I decided, uh, okay, then let, let's make a ranking of the best 100, and we use this as well for the bots camp to identify interesting people. And uh, yeah, currently, as I said before, we have like 1,400 people already and on that list. So Sparky is supporting us there as well, identifying new people, speaking or writing about AI bots or um, deep learning, machine learning. Yeah, and then what we do, we, we cur curate that list and we publish the best 100 on our website. And then you see every second week is like a competition, seeing like um, what, how did I how did I did and uh, what's what's my what are my peers doing and this is um, a little bit of gamification as well. You see to, to motivate a little bit the people, and uh, we we got a lot of uh, positive feedbacks. On the other hand, yes, as well, people moaning about like yeah, about cloud. But for me, it's not that relevant if it's cloud or whatever score it is, you know. But here we have, like, we decided for the cloud score, and it is working fine, you know. We're having, second week, we get, like, 100 new people on the list. 
for those who don't know what cloud score is, uh, could you just quickly explain uh, how the how that works? Yeah, with the cloud score, you um, connect like your social profiles, you know, like Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. There are several um, online profiles you connect to to the cloud score. And what cloud is doing is uh, measuring like interactions. Not like the number of tweets you are tweeting, for example, but like how many retweets you have, likes, or interactions. And based on this, it measures like your social influence on the digital channels. And this gives you a number between zero and hundred. And um, the best cloud score I think we have on the on the bot is is about eighty. So you can see there are people very very active and very influential and in in this field. Yeah, I was new to this uh, score, and uh, I just registered. Yeah, I saw like 84 was the highest for you, and uh, I just registered. I have 13 now I, with a new account. So, <laughs> um, well, game is on. <laughs> um, you know, but I think this is a, a good indication to see. You know, there are people tweeting like stupid. For example, uh, I'm I made uh, as well like Sparky. Our um, our Twitter bot. I I may, I put him as the only bot on the on the botish one hundred, and he's not that bad ranked, but not not that good either. You know. But you see, like he's tweeting a lot. But this is the idea behind identifying, not the idea getting a lot of interactions of his tweets, but providing information. And but even Sparky has like a tweet uh, um, has like a cloud score. I I don't know exactly, but forty or something like this. You know. And couldn't it be uh, unequal? I mean, let's say Cristiano Ronaldo would have a bot and talk about uh, AI or, okay, let's say Messi because you're in Barcelona, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, there are so many followers, so just the pure numbers uh, would make it uh, unequal and unbeatable in a way? Yeah, you know, this is an interesting discussion. We could talk like, I think, two hours, you know, like uh, the number of followers doesn't mean that you have a, a, a great cloud score. Yes, but for sure, if you're talking about Ronaldo or Messi, this is obvious because he they have a lot of interactions, fans liking, retweeting, you know. But uh, yeah, number of followers doesn't say anything about your uh, social influence on on cloud. Mm -hmm. um, you have um, a lot of experience in the health uh, industry. Uh, it seems like uh, chatbots can be very powerful in 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 that space. Uh, what are the reasons behind that? Yeah, absolutely. And um, there, um, you can imagine the healthcare um, area is very big. You know, and uh, there you have a lot of possibilities using using bots or chatbots. Just imagine, like uh, one easy example, you are looking for a schedule with your with, with your doctor. You know, usually now it's you have to call the office and say like, okay, when do the doctor has time, and then you have or you have to change again. And this is is a very easy usage of, of a bot, of a chatbot, using talking with the, the bot, saying like, okay, what I'm looking for, what treatment, or, tre or what doctor I'm looking for, when do I have time? And then the bot just can tell you, okay, what is the best time for you? And you can like replace, um, re reduce the work for medical assistance doing their job what they really want to do and not like uh, looking for schedules you know but there are a lot of lot of more um, examples using uh, chatbots in healthcare or so-called health bots yeah for sure um one of the things uh, people talk about is diagnosing uh illnesses uh what mm -hmm. do you think uh, artificial intelligence uh what uh role can play in, in this? Uh, is it reliable already or what, what's going to be evolved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned before, before I went to Barcelona, I, I worked with IBM in the healthcare sector. And IBM, uh, you just think about then Watson, you know. And what is Watson doing? Like, uh, you have that many information or research papers every week you have new research you know and you as a medical doctor 
how you can cope with all the information, you know, like all the latest research. So what is a, a computer doing is like reading, he can read thousand or hundred thousand quicker than you, you know, get like all the latest updates and information and he can provide real information and value out of this research and yeah but at the end it's still a doctor you know he is like um, he gets more information or more background for a possible decision and he doesn't has to read all this uh, medical research for example but even like uh, it's like all about uh, text you know but this is the same with like uh, images you know like artificial intelligence or like machine learning they can compare a lot of images very, very quickly. They have thousands and thousands of pictures and they can see like, oh, there we see like some similarities or this or like, this can be this and that. And again, providing information for for, uh, for medical doctor. Sounds like uh, we have a nice future in, in that regard. Um, Absolutely. How about the sensitive topics? Like people are sometimes more shy to talk about uh, things they they feel uncomfortable about, even to the doctor. Uh, would the bots uh, be a solution? <laughs> yeah, this is a, a great example as well. I saw some studies, not in the healthcare sector, but especially there is in the healthcare sector, but I'm talking about the uh, school. Imagine now you are, um, um, you are, um, student you know and you want to ask some questions but you are too shy to ask your teacher and now you can and uh, there are studies that showed that students are more willing speaking to a bot about the problems or asking questions than to a student and the same is like in healthcare if you can uh, talk, talk to um, to a bot like saying i don't feel comfortable and the bot like can it's not like yeah he, he can give you advice you know and uh, or he, either he won't blame you uh, like saying what the hell are you asking me again and again you know the, like the bot he is like always there answering answering your questions i think that this is a big opportunity as well for the bots yes i think it's going to be big in the future with all the responsibilities what comes with it actually mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely uh, so Obviously, good with Twitter. Uh, you have many uh, accounts. You just talked about uh, big numbers in a short time. Um, what do you think? What uh, Twitter has a role in the bot space? Uh, it was always good with uh, customer services, but sometimes a little bit mm -hmm. uh, uh, less. Uh, how should I say? Uh, innovative than, uh, for example, Facebook. Yeah, but perhaps you are talking about the new feature. They are, um, they they made some um, um, prototypes on on Twitter for direct messaging in in bots, and now they are opening opening it for 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 the for public use. You know, and um, I think this is a very good um, opportunity as well for us for the bots camp. So we we already applied for our Sparky bot. You know, because on Twitter. As I said before, we have we have there the, the our, our community of participants or speakers, and that um, and this is a we are looking for building like a, a bot on Twitter direct messages. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so last question. Uh, you grew up in uh, Switzerland, so it almost uh, assumed that you speak a lot of languages. Yeah, I can. I speak a little bit of German. No, I grew up in Zurich, so I speak German. And uh, in, at school, I spoke French as well. I lost it a little bit, but uh, I still can read and understand. And obviously, Spanish is um, I'm used to as well, a little bit of Italian. So yeah, that's why I, I really like uh, having contact uh, in, with a lot of international people and speaking in their mother language. And I'm very happy speaking like four or five languages. Uh, as a natural language uh, understanding improves, uh, how do you think, like, would, would English become more like a dominator in a way? Because uh, I talked with some German uh, developers and they told me like it's it's way more expensive to develop to a german 
uh, uh, market than to, uh, to uh, English. Uh, what do you think about that? Mm, I think the, the technology will allow us to even build uh, in whatever language, you know, not even like written, but like as well spoken. Thinking about Alexa, you know, and yes, for sure, like the coding will be like in, in, in their own language, but like uh, whatever content it is, if it is English, Spanish, Italian, or whatever, I think the markets are big enough like um, developing solutions like for German or um, or even for example Swiss German you know we I have been in, on an event for in Switzerland for digital Switzerland and there we were, we made some bets and one bet was that there will be developed a chatbot in Swiss German you know you see now uh, if it's not if it's only like a challenge or re a real project this we will see but I think what they want to show is like you don't have to care about uh, what language it, it, it is. Yeah, it ultimately should uh, improve our life and not uh, make it more difficult to speak yeah. with my Hungarian accent to an English bot, right? <laughs> yeah, the same with my English accent. You know, always people say like, yeah, but you're not native. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can still speak, no? But it's funny that you uh, mentioned the Swiss uh, German because that's what I wanted to ask actually. Like uh, <laughs> Amazon uh, has already uh, the German Alexa, but it's probably not the best for uh, Swiss German. <laughs> yeah, but there are not. Yeah, there are hundreds of languages spoken on, on all over the world, you know. And uh, I think there, or there, there are already solutions in you know, coping with all these languages spoken, not only written. But speaking to to like Alexa or, or voice bots, you know, this is uh, coming the next months definitely. All right. Um, just uh, quickly back to bots camp. Um, can you give us a brief uh, uh, preview? Who is going to speak and um, what's going to be the learning point for us? Yeah, for sure. As I said, um, it, the next is uh, April 26th, so in three weeks' time. Um, you best go to our website because there you see like all the presenters we have already in, in the, all the sessions we have already. But it's like uh, various topics, like we're talking about uh, banking bots, we are talking about AI, um, edtech, uh, education. We are talking even about uh, Robbie Williams, voice bot from Alexa, you know, this is a great variety. And based on your interests, you best uh, choose your sessions in our Slack community. So with one click you get in, in, in our Slack community, choose your sessions and then you are ready to join like the presentations. Okay, thank you Thomas for the wonderful interview. Uh, yeah, so what's you. the next step if someone wants to attend uh, the bots camp? Yeah, best you go to the website botscamp.co and there you find all the information how to register to jump in our Slack and then you get a friendly welcome from our Sparky bot. He will tell you all the details. It's lovely, I can tell you. All right, uh, thank you very much and uh, <laughs> That's see you. Meeting, no? Okay, so thank you very much for this opportunity and yeah, hope to see you all in the, in the next botscamp or in June, so September or December, we are back again. Yeah, committed guy. <laughs> thank you, Thomas. Okay, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye.